All right, so I'm gonna make a quick installation video tips and how I have everything wired. This is not gonna be a step by step because I already have it installed. So um, it's gonna be a quick set of summarizations of what's gonna happen. So let's go talk, look at the back and then we'll probably figure out from there. Again, there are many units. There's This is the 4.4 one. There is the uh, 5.1 one, which it looks very similar. But for the most part, let's just go break it down by each port. We got the power, which carries most of all this, the, the signal. The VTR carries the audio. And then we have the uh, USB, GPS, and uh, you have your antenna. So let's start with the power right there. This is the cable you're gonna get from uh, the seller. It's gonna be, it's gonna generally carry, you know, your steering wheels controls, your auto antenna, uh, one of the blue wiring, the IR, uh, reverse detection, headlamp detections, accelerate power, ground, etc., etc. So this is gonna be your main cable. It also carries audio too, but I don't use the audio off of this cable. I use the RCA ones. So that's something to keep in mind of. As you can see, I have it wrapped up all the way here. I'm not an audio installer by any means, so this is the way I installed it. I pretty much crimped the uh, the wires, or I spliced it into. These are my harnesses that I bought from AE64. Um, so yeah, so that's how I did it for or for a temporary job. So there you go. If you have the base model. You should be able to just plug into this. This is what I heard. You just plug in this cable and you don't have to deal with anything else. If you have, you know, the Harman Kardon, you're going to have these audio, um, you need these audio stuff right here. This is a six, I believe like a six pin or eight pin. And then there's also a 10 and six pin for audio. So there, that's going on there. Um, the seller also included this guy right here, which is the antenna adapter, which is really useful. So I still have FM right there so that's the main thing right there and you can see it wraps all the way up and then plugs into the base model with no problem Harman Kardon you're gonna have to splice it through certain wires to get the power and all that crap uh, the next off uh, let's talk about the VTR which is um, I believe it's the pre outs for preamps what I had to do here is let me show you so then this is the preamps so yeah, you got all these RCA jacks. It also includes things like the front camera, the uh, rear camera, video out if you want to hook up an N64 or PlayStation, etc. So this is the port you're going to get from them. Um, and here are my, uh, uh, let me show you the harness I got from um, A64 because it makes it a lot easier. So here is the, I believe the 10 pin. Um, it's right there. And then there is also a six pin that I had down here, and that carries the left and right audio jacks. All right, so for this next segment, this is pretty much be for the Harman Kardon people out there. This is uh, the pins that I needed, because the base model is plug and play pretty much from what I heard. Um, so let's go start with it. This is the 10 pin, I believe. So this I got this from the AE64, so uh, 10 pin harness. And that's going to be wired through most of your stuff, like uh, the amp, as you can see the blue wires is, one is amp, one is uh, remote amp startup, and this one's like an antenna right here, as well as constant power, battery, uh, accelerated power, and uh, the ground. You also have some audio, um, audio signals coming from this port too. So with the AE64s, they supply the RCA jacks for you, uh, that way you can just plug in straight into the unit. Okay, and then there's the, the next one um, for you guys is the 28 pin. So there's the 28 pin right there. So I'm gonna show you the focus. All right, so with the 28 pin guys, um, this controls, uh, this has aux. So when you wanna plug things through aux, which I already have it plugged into here. But with the, so you have the aux. And then you have your three steering wheel controls. So, you know, the, the one I'm holding right here, these three wires control uh, uh, positive, negative, and then the ground itself. So that's the steering wheel controls. I actually have two more pins too, but uh, I'm not using them. I believe one is um, vehicle speed and the other one is, um, I don't remember, but uh, you don't use these two ones with the harness kit that he gives you at AE64. 
So we start. We talked about the 28 pin. We talked about the 10 pin, and, and there's also the six pin. So the six pin harness for you guys it looks like this from A64. You, um, the only purpose is the audio for the rear, I believe, or the front. I believe these are the rear. So then you just plug these in to the to straight into the original harness, and you should be good. As you guys know, there is some humming noise that's coming through. Um, I try I try grounding other uh, solutions. I'm not an audio installer by any means. As you can see, I have these crimp wires. I did this because I want to be reversible just in case I wanted to give this to my brother or something because he has a 15WX2. That way he can still retain this and I didn't want to cut anything. So that could cause the hum too. Who knows? Anyways, um, these are... Um, these are the loop ground loop isolators these guys remove the hum for me um i bought this at best buy it was like 10 12 bucks or something like that and i bought two and it reduces the noise about i would say like 90 percent. so it's a big difference if you get these guys it will remove the hum um, almost completely i ran these guys in parallel so or uh, in series i guess so I had RCA jacks here, then I just kind of went through them, and then it further reduced the noise even more. Uh, I played a song too, and I was like, hey, is it gonna make the sound sound any different to my ears? It doesn't, so I could, hmm, the noise really bugs me in the front, because uh, 90%, you still have that 10%, which is doable, you have the audio on, you're not gonna really hear it, but if you run them in series, uh, it re I would say they remove the nine percent, so there's like a one percent of you can't even really hear that. But so I'm not I'm debating if I should get another box. Um, I know people say some of this is a band aid solution. You know, I again I'm not an audio guy, but this is what worked for me, and I just want to share with you guys. Um, so yeah, so that's the main thing right there, and these are kind of the. Uh, so these are the plugs, these are the factory harness that I didn't touch, you know. I, you buy these harnesses from AE64, you don't ever have to touch, touch your factory harnesses, which is really nice. That way you can keep them in pristine condition. Okay, so if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, that's the inst that's pretty much the cable walkthrough. Um, and uh, what I needed to do to get it to work. Uh, oh yeah, let me just note one more thing. So, um... So with the with the unit I bought from AliExpress, uh, as you can see here, it has a fan. I know the 5.1 ones, they actually extrude out a little more, and it looks like it's a fanless design. So you actually pay a little bit more uh, to get that beefier heat sink set up. Uh, what I did right here is I removed these screws here, and then um, took out this little panel. And then I, there's, I can see the processor. Um, so I slapped a heat sink on it to keep it cooler because it had no heat sink at all whatsoever. And then for this fan, it's actually pretty loud. It's a super tiny fan. Um, I put uh, I put some resistors to uh, quiet it down. It does slow the RPM, but with the heat sink, I think I can I think I could just run it without the fan at all, and uh, it should be still okay because with that heat sink, I put a, put a pretty uh, pretty good size heat sink under this uh, silver part. So that's what I did for that. All right, so I got my tripod set up so you can see a little bit better. First off, let's try volume control with the bad boy. 